All right, everyone, we've got an absolutely chock full pod for you. And we are answering the burning questions like, what does high school dating have to do with pickleball? Is there a buyout scandal? Is that a scandal? Who is the new king of pickleball? Or is it a giant? What is the number one determinant for longevity in life and in pickleball? Mm. Draft update, no, for real, we have a draft update, a real one. And is what is the best thing to happen to the color purple since Barney? For real. All that and more in Pod 37, as well as the entire theme song. That's right, back by popular demand. Here we go. You tuned in now to this pickleball life. I'm K Dubs and Jilly B is my wife. She's the pro and I've got the filler. She's sweet to me, but on the court, she's a killer. Unadulterated and efficiently bringing you the best and worst things in Phoebe. Tell your friends and stay for another. another. And no one loves us more, more than your mother. mother. One thing's for sure, one hit and, and you're, you're addicted. addicted. Grab a pile, grab a court, don't resist it. So click subscribe, let's go, let's, let's get, get cracking. Things on gun, let's go, let's get laughing. This pickleball life. Yo, what up? It's your girl, Jilly B. And your girl, K-Dubs. And we are here with another loaded pod. It's pod 37. Are we in contract hell or seventh heaven? All right, let's get to it in case you missed it. In case you missed it, Kristen, Finland has retained its status just last week as the world's happiest nation in the latest World Happiness Report. That's Seven years in a row. I always thought it was Denmark, but what the heck does this have to do with pickleball? What does this have to do with pickleball, Kristen? I have no idea. (laughs) But but I think most of our listeners are pretty happy people and would find this chicken wisdom nugget absolutely delicious. Okay, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole, but I have a theory on why these countries are happy. Okay, and And by these countries, what do you mean? Like Denmark, Switzerland? Yeah, like what type of countries are we talking about? Okay, They're highly homogenized countries. There's not a lot of different types of people. They're not the melting pot America is. So So it's it's kind of like people in Indian Wells are really happy. (laughs) Good for you. You've got sunshine, pickleball, and green, green grass. So you got Finland, Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, Israel, I Netherlands, mean, I rest Norway. My case. <laughs> Wait, you forgot oh, Luxembourg, Israel? Switzerland, okay. Australia, New Zealand, Costa Rica, Kuwait. Wait, there's no way Israel made this list. Number five. Wait, hold on. Yeah, number five. Where is like? Where's the U.S. Twenty third. I think what we need. Okay. I think I think what the World Happiness Report missed is a column that's like. Pickleball courts per capita, yeah, per capita for this. In which case, Utah is the happiest country (laughs) Country on the world. (laughs) (laughs) Totally, exactly. Uh, In case you missed it, the you know, there's like three national championships now for collegiate pickleball, and once again, it came down to Utah versus Utah. Again? (laughs) Who won? Did Utah win? (laughs) It was like Utah Tech versus Utah Valley. So yeah, they have pickleball per capita uh, figured out in Utah. Interesting. All right. In case you missed it, did you know the average person thinks 80,000 thoughts a day and 60,000 are negative? And how many do you think are the same thoughts? Yeah. How many do you think? <laughs> well, let alone the same negative thoughts. But yeah, it's like 50,000. It's 70,000. So what does that mean? Like, how do you ever... Oh, okay. So 80,000 total. Mm-hmm. 70,000 are repeats. Yes. And of those 70, 60 are negative. Very good. Wow. So like, how do you Brutal. move into the future if your thoughts and mind are perpetually living in the past? Like, we are a tape loop. So your body then is like essentially becoming your mind and it's on autopilot with the same thoughts over and over and over. Um, And I think that's so interesting. So I just had to throw that out in the case you missed it. And I always talk about where does confidence come from and people know their confidence can be lost, but they don't think about like where it can be found. Mm. And they have this preconceived notion that they'll they'll be confident when they start playing well. And it's like, no, 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 no. You don't start playing well without thinking well. So you have to start that upward spiral yourself and you have to believe in the possible 100%. until you see it happen and then you're like yeah of course it happened that's what i expected in case you missed it 
Did you see that breakdancing has been added to the Olympics? Are you going to tell our pod listeners how we know that? <laughs> <laughs> and first off, it's not called breakdancing. It's called breaking, which I know you're like, I'm good at breaking. I break every day. Every stop sign I see, break, break, break. Is there is there a skill to breaking? Our Tesla does it for us. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't have a Tesla yet. <laughs> so we were doing connections the other night. And it was like, what do these four words have in common? And it was like breaking, skating, hockey. And there were like... Yeah, it was a, a bunch of sports that kind of could sound like some other things. Right. And so no, breaking means breakdancing. And it You're is a like, sport in the what? Olympics. And pickleball is not. So hope you sleep well tonight. Yeah. Apparently, breakdancing is more more international than pickleball. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. In case you missed it, Kristen, you might already know this. We did have a question from a Joyrider listener asking, is it really Kristen? In all of the musical melodies and songs in our podcast, is that really her voice? And the answer is yes. For those of you that did not know, Kristen's mother is an amazing singer and her father is a golf pro. Golf pro. And in case you missed it, Kristen is a golf pro singer. As I like to say, I am the least original apple <laughs> falling from that tree. <laughs> like, oh, red, shiny. Oh, it's a gala apple. That's exactly what I expected. <laughs> In case you missed it, more noise complaint lawsuits for pickleball. No, this where? one coming from Cape Shores, Delaware. The Catses. I mean, normally I'm a fan of cats, but apparently these cats are not kind of cool cats we know. And they filed suit against their HOA to stop Pickle from ruining their quiet lives. Mm. Like, can we just put this to rest? Can we just make their some kind of like federal law that the noise of pickleball is not something legally suable. Guys, I <laughs> like, love where do we the draw sound the line? of the plastic wiffle ball slapping against that carbon fiber thermoformed <laughs> face in the mo early morning. It's like the smell of coffee. I love the sound of pickleballs. Yeah, I mean, I guess golf oh. is heading towards a world where there's going to be a pro ball and an amateur ball. So maybe this is going to be like, there's the HOA ball and then the everyone else ball. <laughs> well, like, I remember... The HOA friendly ball. So remember when we were evaluating paddles, for those of you that don't know, when I turned pro a year ago, kind of celebrating that one year anniversary, actually, um, I tested like every paddle and I was just on a mission not to find like the best deal, but to find the best paddle. And so in that mission, I found a company called Master Athletics. They make great unibody construction, edgeless construction, unibody paddles. And one of them is called the Q and it's the quiet paddle. And um, their brand manager was telling me like, yeah, we're totally sold out of this paddle. The second we get it in stock, we sell it out. We have one customer HOAs. Yeah. HOAs and country clubs, right? And now there's the owl paddle, which is felt yeah. based. Yeah, I haven't seen it in person. Uh, have you? Apparently, it's a great paddle. Yeah. Well, one thing about that quiet paddle is it, it was illegal. Yeah, not so USA So now pickleball USA group. Pickleball has a special category for quiet paddles. But I think the owl paddle that sponsors the, the APP tour is USA Pickleball approved for pro amateur events is a felt face. Yeah. I, I think it's a separate category, though. Really? We'll have to we'll have to fact check that. Okay, check the screen on YouTube, and we'll, <laughs> and we'll have an arrow that points to Put which one of us was right and which one of us was wrong. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> the correct player was KW. <laughs> All right, Kristen. In case you missed it, speaking of the APP, the APP had its first major of the year, the Chase Miami Open. Uh, we were home, did not decide to play this one. And we I was, tried to make it happen. It just wasn't wasn't meant to be. It was not meant to be, but that's okay. I'll be in Florida all next week. More on that later. So I was super impressed by a guy named Purple Jesus and his partner, of course, Eric Lang. Can we just talk about Purple Jesus, a.k.a. Max Manthau for a second, wearing what color? Purple. All purple. Assuming it's his alma mater from tennis? It is. He went to UW. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. which explains the, the Eric Lane connection. They got that oh, that Pacific PNW. Northwest. Okay. PN dubs in okay. the house. Okay. UW. Okay. Go Huskies. Yeah, purple Jesus. We almost mentioned him after Sacramento because I was like, who is this guy? 
And then I somehow, I don't think we mentioned it. Listen to this legend. But he starts in men's pro qualifiers, wins 12 matches in one day to win a bronze medal in singles. Wow. Or is this doubles? Is this singles? Singles. Singles, obviously, in doubles, he had uh, he didn't have to qualify. Yeah, that's, that is quite Oh, I see a little feet. snide note in here from you. Remember that, Jill, the next time you complain about seven matches in one day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kristen. <laughs> See, I, I wrote it down, but then I decided not to say it. It <laughs> does not make it any less painful. <laughs> no, but I do think, you know, in the be your own uh, version of your positive thinking, it's like the next time you have seven matches and you're like, holy crap, you're like, well, at least it's not 12. <laughs> uh, I'm giving so, Eric Lang an award. Best big guy in pickleball. I'm sorry, Sam Query. I don't think Sam Query is a big guy. He is like a special category asterisk big guy, like Ichabod Crane category, like tall, lanky category, like who is Ichabod string Crane? Bean. Oh, you don't know Ichabod Crane? This is a perfect example, uh, audience, of who Jill is. <laughs> <laughs> she ignorant, watched ignorant. The Godfather and Scarface growing up instead of Disney movies. Pulp Fiction, too. And, oh, yeah, Pulp Fiction. Instead of Disney movies and musicals like me. So every time I'm like, have you seen? No, I have not seen. I oh, yeah, ask my friend, Crane. please don't start the sentence, have Have you seen? With mm -hmm. the answers. Yeah. Like, have you read? Okay. Okay. Have you read Sleepy Hollow? Okay. I am, I am giving... The Headless Horseman. I am giving Eric Lang an award for best big guy in pickleball and best lob right there with Callan Dawson. The guy's lob is a thing of beauty. Yeah. Millie Rain too. What lobs? And I have no idea with either of them when they set up for it because they, they do it off the bounce a lot if it's going to be a dink or a lob. And I'm going to practice this. You guys are going to see me lobbing more. I think I don't do it enough because Never enough. I don't think of it as an effective strategy against me, right? So like Leah Jansen's mm -hmm. like, hey, there are two girls I don't lob. You and Callie. And you know, that was a year ago. So now there's probably a couple other girls like probably don't want to lob Tyra. She's super quick. Vivian Glosman, she's so tall. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna bring it out. I think you're gonna see Jilly B uh lobbing away. Lob. Lob one Nothing lob. Nothing but lob. One lob. And also, I always ask for more lobs. Don't you have to show your ID when you check in to a tournament? Oh, uh, with the purple Jesus thing? So how is he registering as purple Jesus and then checking in as Max Manthou? Um, I think... <gasps> His driver's license must say purple Jesus! Yes, that's that's what I was coming to the conclusion of. Um, yeah, really interesting. But Pickleball has had that the whole time. Like, the unicorn and Share Bear Sherry and um, Blue Pegasus Washington. So, I don't know. They must just have all the names. All the names written down. I'm changing. I've just made a game time decision, you guys. Mm -hmm. I am changing my name to Orange Tabby. <laughs> Toby, I the was going Orange in a different direction. Tabby. You're going in a different direction? Jillian, Jill, Jilly B, <laughs> Joy Rider. Johnny Pickleball. Blonde Bombshell. Pickleball Braverman. No, Toby, the Orange Tabby. Toby, the Tabby. Braverman. I want to go back to the World Happiness Report because one thing I learned in that <laughs> this is, is that the new Pato. This is this is my new Pato. Those are that that is a joke for longtime pod listeners. Okay. In my deep analysis of the World Happiness Report, mm -hmm. seven minutes yesterday, um, it looks like in almost every single country, what category by age are the unhappiest? Ooh. So you've got like old. Oh, what demographic yeah. inside of a country? Yeah, young. Probably like 25 to 35 year olds. No, it's like 13 to 17, 12 to 18 year olds. I'm like, oh, oh my man, God. And those dude, hormones will kill you. Uh, yeah, is it hormonal? Like your bills are paid for. Like teen and then, angst. And then right after that, the happiest. So it's like. Free at last. Did you realize that like you had to go and struggle in the real world to come back and be like, oh my God, I had it so good. Yeah, it is. It is definitely a uh, question. I mean, lately my brain goes to like, what's wrong with our school system mm. that we're creating this kind of 
teen angst or would they be angsty no matter what like the sit down well, show up in time like follow instructions no sense of autonomy like at least in my high school they treated us like college kids we could selected our classes scheduled nice. our free periods I'm blah, so blah, overhearing blah. about your forward thinking <laughs> high school that treated you like normal human beings which kind of leads to the next in case you missed it did you know that almost 20 percent of America's youth are already obese oh, like God, really that let makes that me sit so in. sad so sad I know it's so easy to look at obese people and be like bad life choices but at this point it's like you are running from a giant boulder called the uh industrial farming complex industrial farming complex yeah I was thinking like do we need pickleball courts in elementary school is the adult sedentary lifestyle infecting children or are politicians literally just trying to kill kids by allowing highly processed foods like in um Fruit Loops, there is a colored dye banned in every single other developed country. Yeah. But America, because yeah. of its effect on your brain. Neurologically, it's bad for you. Yeah. It's and poison. then and you're like, oh, yeah, be healthy, do sports. And then they just market like Gatorade, sugar water, and like, you know, fake, fa fake protein bars that are just candy bars. Fun fact food stamps can be used to buy Coca Cola, chips, cereal, basically any highly processed food item in case you thought you were listening to a pickleball podcast it is a health podcast now no. <laughs> i just i just find the little nuggets that i think are interesting hopefully they're organic and not processed <laughs> nuggets they're All grass right. fed grass finished <laughs> wisdom nuggets okay <laughs> okay last in case you missed it no we, okay go no Kristen, it's go. my turn you go, in hey, case go you off, missed sis. it go off sis katie perry tried to break the algorithm on instagram by sparking a debate not between pickleball and tennis but pickleball and padel which is a debate that does keep being brought up to me so i i hear her and i looked at the three thousand comments and it's still just tennis haters I didn't see one comment from Wait, Padel. tennis haters on pickleball. Yeah. She's like, what do you got? To prove me wrong. Padel is better than pickleball. Pickleball is the best. And one Padel company was like, come to our event and we'll prove you wrong. And everything else was just like, love your outfit or pickleball sucks. I love tennis. So mm. these tennis haters, they just they just won't quit. How many of you guys have tried Padel? Is anyone, anyone a Padel this fan is, out this there? This is what I don't understand about tennis <clears throat> hating on pickleballers. Listen. I want nothing from you, tennis players. Just your courts. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Just your courts. Your no, I'm attention, kidding. I'm kidding. If you have six courts, I will sponsors. take five and a half. <laughs> and you can run suicides on the other <laughs> half of one court that I leave you. And yeah, I think that's that fair. Is, that is pretty much tennis in a nutshell. Yeah. yeah I think suicides. That's, yeah, I think that's fair. All right. In case you missed it. Finally, I have been asked over and over and over. And for one week, I have a Mizuno discount code. Seven days from today. And if you go to MizunoUSA.com and you use code JB15, you will have 15% off. It is a one-time code. Mizuno does not give out these codes. And we are very lucky to have it. It is one-time use but on multiple products. So if you want to go and stock up on the uh, Wave AC Court 6 that I play, I've got, I'm wearing right now the super cool black and gold anniversary edition. Oh, yeah. And these are the Wave Exceed Tour 6s. I like them even better than the 5s, which I did not know was f actually possible. These are the lightest weight shoes I have been able to find in the yeah. game. Amazing. Um, literally the absolute lightest. I used to play Nikes. I mean, I've tried everything. I thought the Asics were light. You um, tried the On Clouds. The Dell Resolution tried the... 8s. I tried the On Clouds. So super stoked to be partnered with Mizuno and very lucky to get this discount code. Okay, so you said seven days, but what, what's the deadline? Uh, actually, it might be like six days. It's April 1st. March 31st. It expired. It's April 1st. April 1st. So about a week. Okay. Um, in case you missed it, we have seen... Pickleball infiltrate malls. Yeah. But what's next? Wait, can I think about this? Parking lots. Well, that's not really like... The top of parking Building. Lots. In a building. Uh, well, all these office buildings in America right now Okay, are... yeah, we thought, we've talked about like Bed Bath & Beyond, closed okay. big box stores. But 
what's a type of big building specific to something you never go to because movies, you've seen movie none theaters, of them. Movie theaters, movie theaters. Yes. So in Bluff City, a.k.a. Uh, Delaware, Memphis, Tennessee, they have now taken over the Balco Bartlett Cinema. Wow. I hope they kept the concession stand, though. You know, that's a that great is combo. a really interesting idea because you've got the high ceilings you've got air conditioning yeah it probably does involve a little bit more construction though because yeah, you've got windows. the raked you know seats you have to flatten but Just demo yeah there you go wow yeah so as the movie industry tanks and everyone watches netflix you're actually just supporting future pickleball courts <laughs> <laughs> This podcast, not sponsored by Netflix. Yet, <laughs> yet. Not sponsored and definitely by definitely not Fox sponsored Search by Light. Regal Cinema. <laughs> Century, what is it? Century oh, movies? Yes. Okay. Um, so can we catch up for a second? Because it's been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, been a minute. So... We get asked a lot, like, you know, what do you guys do in an off week? Because it's been it's been an mm-hmm. off week. Mm-hmm. And the answer to that is Kristen wears full sweatpants, T-shirt, trucker hat, rolls up the sleeves of her shirt. So just like I look every day. Every on, single day. At pickleball tournaments. Yep, yep. And, you know, in every relationship, there's a spender and a saver. In our relationship, there seems to be someone who works, does the family finances, And then someone who builds furniture all day who has retired at 36 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Teaches the occasional golf lesson. Go on, sis. (laughs) So Kristen. (laughs) Tell me more about (laughs) this wonderful pickleball life. So this pickleball life has turned out very well. (laughs) For Kristen, I come home and I'm like, what you looking at? Oh, just some furniture. What you doing? Building furniture. Fixing the closet, demoing the Thinking closets, about furniture. Thinking about furniture. Watching people flip furniture. <laughs> Looking for furniture to flip. No, we have been on a little bit of a, a getting the house ready kick, which I think the house can sense um, because we are determined to find a house in the desert. We want to stay in the desert. Um, Zillow. And so we've been spending a lot of time on Zillow looking for shacks on large lots in the Rancho Mirage area to build at least two pickleball courts. Yeah, maybe one of our pod listeners wants to sell us their house (laughs) for the pickleball court in Rancho Mirage. (laughs) Speaking of which, I did play pickleball yesterday, don't tell my doctor, and I ran into two of our pod listeners and they literally heard me talking to someone and were like, I know your voice. You're the girl from our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and little did I know, they were actually members at the country club where I work, where I actually played pickleball. Where you of work working. or show up and teach the occasion? Mm-hmm. You know, where I show up and play pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How did Kristen get games. fired? Well, her boss listened to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... Um, I think that's awesome. You do. That happens all the time. I feel like we're at we're at tournaments and people be like, oh, I recognize that voice. And it's your voice. You have such a... This is offense. Is it offensive to say face for radio? Voice for radio? What's well, it's the- supposed... The, the joke is supposed to be, wow, you really have a face for oh. radio. Because, like, no one wants to see you. But no. since our radio show is a visual as well, <laughs> in case you missed it, we also have video. <laughs> I love your radio face. Um, But, yeah, I have a voice for radio. Just like, uh, your, just like your mother who hosts jazz radio shows among other voice related activities and has worked for radio stations my entire life yes that's right this just in i have descended from a singing acting radio mother and a golf uh enthusiast collegiate playing father you have such a talented background ready for npr so yeah um i have been recording my own voice since i was young enough but old enough to read so point being yeah i expect to run into uh pod listeners at a pickleball tournament but i don't necessarily expect to run into pod listeners yeah when i'm just at rec play which you're so famous you know brings me back to like what's so great about pickleball is you just never know who you're gonna meet oh (laughs) it's like a box of chocolates (laughs) 
<clears throat> I also may have found us a handyman, you know, all in the span of 20 minutes. Okay, so what I was saying earlier is I think the house can sense that we are about to rent it out and or sell it because it has been crushing it. We hosted, we had the most beautiful night two nights ago. We hosted our friends Ben and Emily who have encouraged us to do the podcast um, among many other uh, many other things they've helped us with and, and pushed us into. And uh, it was just gorgeous. The weather has been so lovely in the I desert know. you it really, really have perfect. like crazy windy seasons and the wind's been really mild other than the past two days but yeah though the backyard was like gorgeous the sun was setting um we had like the street stream lights mm-hmm. up made a beautiful meal of uh sausage sauerkraut and onions i found new cushions for our chaise yeah. loungers so the house is like you're gonna get rid of me watch this i know mm-hmm. i know let's talk about trace palapas real fast Longtime pod listeners, you know that I am in love with Trace Palapas, which is pickleball paradise in Baja Sur, Mexico. So one hour away from Los Cabos Airport. So super easy to get to from the West Coast. There's six hour direct flights from JFK in New York, actually. Otherwise, if you're on the West Coast, super quick trip. Um, if you like tacos, margaritas, um, the sunshine, beach, sunshine. Me and Pickleball, this is the camp for you, but we are sold out. So this camp is October 30th of 2024. It is officially, officially sold out. Um, But you can register for the wait list. I do anticipate, you know, two to three people will inadvertently have to fall fall out in some capacity. Fall Pickleball. And then, um, yeah, if you are interested in coming and seeing me outside of that, you can always email us thispblife at gmail.com. And if not, you can get on the wait list for 2025. No, we haven't set that up yet. (laughs) I'm just kidding. The pre-order list. (laughs) Are we ready for questions from Joyriders? All right, we got some questions from Joyriders. How do you find partners on the pro tour? Do people break up a lot? To which I say it's exactly like dating in high school, which I wouldn't know because I didn't date in high school. (laughs) Can't imagine why that was. (laughs) <laughs> but it is definitely a little bit like, hey, I heard somebody likes you. Do you want to know who? <laughs> Sometimes you communicate through agents. Sometimes you... Through um, other partners, ex-partners, future partners. Okay, it's like dating in high school. You've got the couples that are like super serious, right? That are just oh, like totally. not going to break up. They're like the it King couple. and queen of homecoming week. And even that every now and then. Like don't forget Anna Bright and, Lin- and Riley Newman played together for like a hot minute last year. Like there have been these, you know, high profile um, fits and starts. So yes, people break up all the time and i think the magic of major league pickleball is actually that you end up being put onto a team and into a partnership you otherwise wouldn't normally have like constructed for yourself Mm -hmm. and it's fun to see those partnerships withstand like anna bright and rachel rohrabacher i don't know if edda uh edda wright and megan dazon had been playing together or edda and irena weren't they on a team together yes so i i don't know if you uh so so yes to answer your question how do you find partners on the pro tour it's a mix of obviously being asked asking someone people break up all the time i think a strategy a lot of the pros use that i've implemented too is like hey you want to play the first quarter together or you want to play four events together Mm -hmm. and you know there are people whose strategies are well i'm going to play with as many player different good players as i can this year i think the best strategy is like Find one to two people and stick to that. Like develop patterns. Hopefully you you live close to each other. And I think we see a lot of that. Like Austin, Texas, they're playing together. They're training together. South Florida, a lot of California players. And I think that there is such logic to that. And I will say um, women are just at a massive premium right now. So you've got this influx of guys on the tours who are really good. Like, oh my gosh. Um, I'm talking like some of these new guys who could be top 20 in the world easily, like a Will Howells. But there are three of him to every one female. Yeah, it's like reverse easily. beach boys, as I like to say. Two boys for every girl. And I think that's part of the, the fun thing in being a female in the sport. But I do think that there are certain 
types of players who have an easier time getting partnerships in one or the other. Yes. I think it's interesting with a lot of guys, they just go from men's doubles being on the left to mixed doubles being on the left, always playing the same role, always being the pseudo so so called dom. Mm-hmm. And then there are like the right side specialist guys like Callan who are like, okay, I'm playing mixed. Now I have to transition into beast mode and then go back to the right and be, you know, the the unattackable get every ball over the net guy and then I've got to switch back and you play MLP and you got to do that one game to the next. And in women's doubles, it's kind of reversed where there are the right side specialist girls who are like, this is my place. They go to mix. This is my place. They go to women's. This is my place. But if you're a left side girl or a right side guy, you have to make that transition. And sometimes I think that makes you finding a partner, a different kind of animal. Well, it's interesting you bring up you bring that up because are there any top mixed teams where the guy is traditionally a right side player? Like a right side guy. Mm. Yeah, like Dylan's Dylan. probably the the come to mind. It's interesting. And then mm. I was talking to uh Thomas Wilson. I was talking next. to someone the other yeah, Thomas Wilson. I was talking to someone the other day Maybe and I they had. said lefty men don't do well in mixed. I was like, what? Like, that makes no sense. And I had to, like, really think about it. And they said, yeah, name me a top mixed team with a lefty man. Well, for like starters, top, top this team. is like that experiment last night with, like, the six foot and over. And then you get to people who make more mm-hmm. money. You get to this place where it's like, well, how many lefties are there? 10% of the population, I think. Right. So if 10% of the pickleball population is lefty guys, then of that 10%, you know, only a quarter are going to be top 25% players. But his point was like in the top 10, like if you were to top 15, can you list one left-handed guy in the top like 15, yeah, top like, 20? Is like, Pablo like where do you, where do you go? Lefty guy? Yeah. Rafa? Like how deep do you have to go? And mm-hmm. shouldn't you by then, by the time you got there to number 20, I right. mean, guys, shouldn't you have by then been able to list one left-handed so, guy? what's the uh, armchair expert extrapolation? I, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I well, I have a theory. Okay. Left side guys, I mean, lefty guys need a left side girl. A really strong left so side girl. So they're going to get a dom girl, right? And then there's the like, who's driving the bus? Or is the lefty guy mm. a right side guy and like doesn't adjust as well to being the, you but, know, but the, the wild card on the, on the court? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that yet. All right, we have another question. What's the strangest injury you've had while playing pro? Okay, right before Sacramento, I pulled the top of my left bicep, front of my shoulder, vacuuming <laughs> left-handed, purposefully not vacuuming. <laughs> you think that's what it was? Right-handed. People are people are at home going like, wait, so Kristen doesn't work. She builds furniture all day. Why isn't, Why she, isn't vacuuming? she vacuuming? It's a great question. It's a to great which question. I would say, I do vacuum. But Jill really appreciates a clean floor. So she gets there. She was actually gone that day at Home Depot (laughs) buying furniture. (laughs) So if you've never vacuumed with your non-dominant hand before, don't judge me. In fact, immediately stop listening to this podcast. Go grab your (laughs) vacuum and vacuum left-handed because that is hard. Come back with some empathy. Turn the podcast back on. Now, could you take it? Don't stop listening to the pod. Put your earbuds in and go vacuum Mm left-handed. Mm-hmm. Could you take a bit of your own advice on keeping your pickleball paddle in front of you and vacuum with your abs? Use your core when you're vacuuming. I wasn't using my core. Did you let that vacuum get behind you, Jill? I think you're right. I did. No, I'm (laughs) serious. But uh, yeah, I did well in Sacramento. So maybe I should vacuum left-handed more often. It's just a thought. Duct tape the vacuum to your belly button and just go around kind of, you know, hula hooping your way. Develop a training (laughs) aid. An anti-injury training aid for how to vacuum. I like where your head's at, Kristen. This is good stuff. Do what I can, you know, Mm -hmm. since I don't Mm -hmm. do much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Introducing the Infinite Solar Backpack from Ruck. Power up your adventures on the pickleball court or anywhere with sustained energy. Charge on the go with the built-in solar panel. Keep meals cold in the insulated meal compartment. And store dirty clothing in the water-resistant laundry area. Stay connected and never miss a moment. Get yours now at ruckpack.com. Use code JillyB15. 
All right, we've got some really interesting contractual stuff to talk about. So we have a couple different things to talk about here. So you might have heard on our last podcast that we said like 15 players remain roughly on their original MLP contracts, which like MLP and PPA do not want. They want everyone put in these buckets, right? But so there's no. like a, you know, a buyout bucket. Then there's this bucket of people that's like take the reduction and we want you on the MLP PPA, you know, new co tour. We want you here. And we want you playing nowhere reduction. else. Yeah. And we don't want you playing anywhere else. You don't get your freedom. And the, the veiled kind of idea there is you have a reduction in days, but we probably won't use them anyway. So exactly. So what to do with these like 15 people? A lot of them are, they're all with the same agent and they all already had really good original MLP well, they're not contracts. All, all. No, but, but most of them are with, with, Two uh, agents, basically, right. right? And and this huge tranche of them have really great original MLP deals. They had something in these MLP deals not a lot of other players had, mm -hmm. which was they already had their freedom. It was called like an APP carve out, right? So they had the freedom to kind of have their cake and eat it too. So that's Hunter Johnson, Yates Johnson, Alex Trong. These Bobby people, Oshiro. Yeah, these people you just saw who signed with the PPA, right? The PPA two days ago, we're still blocked on all of their socials, but you know, friends send us things. And the Dink reported that Yates Johnson, Hunter Johnson, Alex Strong, and um, Roscoe, Roscoe Bellamy, Bellamy all signed Johnson. with the PPA. Why would they do that when they already have this incredible contract that gives them total and utter freedom? They did get like a good deal in terms of the reduction. It wasn't as steep as other people, but they lose their freedom to go play the APP to go play Pickle for America or something um, World new Series that comes of Pickle, along. the India mm -hmm. event like right so what made them do it I think they're trying to starve JW and Dylan this is a message to JW and Dylan well look who do you have left now on the APP like mm -hmm. we can just keep taking anyone we want from the APP look how strong we are you guys need to come over JW and Dylan and like suck it up interesting that's what well, I think and my sources think yeah I mean, it looks like JW and Dylan still are just playing both. So it's not like they're not playing PPAs. Well, what's more interesting is, or what's interesting to me is like, why sign the guys? Like men are not at a premium. Like the PPA, MLP, like they don't need any more guys. So basically like to sign these bonus guys, they could get three guys for the price of a JW. Like it's not going to cost them much. They can just keep sweeping these extra players under the guys, under the umbrella. And they're like, yeah, what, what's it to us? It's still less than the reduction we're going to get from this player or that. But uh, hopefully, um, you know, it all works out for somewhat the best for these players. I just hope that they um, they feel protected. You know, it's it's like it is just pickleball. But at the end of the day, it's their lives and it's their... Their happiness and their their well-being is not just about the money yeah. it's about having the autonomy to choose where yeah. you are week to week and what your schedule looks like and i don't think anyone should criticize anyone especially not other players criticizing other players for the decisions that they make you know remember what the purpose of the collective was it was to garner fair offers for players you know i think the collective achieved that yeah oh, for, oh my gosh totally you know, we have spelled out on our podcast numerous times if there's a way to offer players freedom give them actual consideration that's super attractive and what do we see now we do see more players playing the app we do see georgia johnson jw johnson dylan tyra, tyra black week. we do see eric lang we see me you know what have i always said offer players their freedom. Um, and so we members of the leadership team of the collective, you know, we put ourselves through tremendous personal and professional and hours risk, upon hardship, hours of work, hundreds of hours of work, speaking our truth and fighting for players' rights. So for anyone who has done, you know, nothing to advance this fight for players and then judge to criticize and criticize players yeah. for taking buyouts or for taking reductions um, is infantile. Ultimately, you know, that's, that's yeah. infantile. The the purpose uh, is to just, you know, fight the good fight for the little man. You mm -hmm. know, the the there's power in numbers, 
um, and there's power in being the the big guy up top. So you know, the little guys at the bottom got to band together. By the way, I'm not speaking from both sides of my mouth where I say don't judge players for taking the deals they they took. No, I'm just saying I I, I want it to be fair for the players. I want the players yeah, to get. You good want deals everyone to to get it to, to deal walk away they're feeling happy with. like they they got something they're happy yeah, with, yeah. not that they got. And we have spoken to some players who seem to be very happy with the deal totally. that they got. To put a to put a button in it, I just think. Um, from, you know, as soon as we found out that the, the, the merger was going to be attempted, my first thought was like, how are they going to get out of these contracts? Mm -hmm. How are they going to try and wiggle out of the, the dollar amounts they ended up at? And we, we got to see their creativity Mm -hmm. on, uh, on contract language. So, you know, I don't think we'll ever quite see what would happen if people called their bluffs, but maybe we will, because there are still people on their original contracts. Um, well, I Riley, ran into Riley someone Newman. else. Who... So is Riley Newman kind of sticking to his guns of, you know, put me to work on my 200 days? You know, let's talk about that. Let's say his contract value is $1.2 million. I don't know. I'm, I'm throwing a number out there. Or let's make it even. Let's just say it's a million dollar year contract. So you got a $3 million uh, cumulative worth uh, contract. Again, this is conjecture. I, I don't know what his contract right. is. Um, it's a nice round number. Yeah, I would definitely say put me to work for my 200 days. What is that? You know, what's a million? Uh, it's like, what do we figure out? Like $10,000 a day or 20, something? 20, yeah, 10,000 bucks a day. Like, yeah, put me to work. No problem. I yeah. think that makes sense. So is he going to stay on that contract? Um, super interesting. Yeah. Put me to work. Yeah, I'll go teach a kid's clinic. We're ready to move on to my favorite mental yes. stuff. Yes. Psychology hour. Are you going Mike Tyson on me right now? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I think you should take that one. All right, all right. We've got some. I've been reading Joe Dispenza, so good. Becoming Supernatural. If you haven't read that, or um, uh, you are the placebo. Oh, fire, fire books. So Joe Dispenza uh, is not a sponsor of this pod. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> and I've uh, been listening to the Human Upgrade podcast, formerly Bulletproof Radio, by Dave Asprey. So one of my favorite little tidbits I picked up is everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face. That is a Mike Tyson Oh, did you want me to do the Mike Tyson because you wanted me to do an accent? (laughs) Can I do a Mike Tyson accent? I've never tried this. This is live and in person, even though it's recorded. Let's go. Everybody gets, everybody has a plan until they get hit in the face. That was pretty it's not, good. It's not great. I thought that was good. But there, there's that. There we, the, the lisp is, is in there. So I'll we'll work in it. Work in it. But, but no it really thinks, reminded uh, me. No one thinks they're going to get hit. Right. No one plans on the hit. Well, some people do. And I think. I definitely plan on getting in the face. I think it's, it's, it's very much like golf, which I always equate to a Jilly B quote yeah. from when I very first met Jill. Aww. She said, sales starts at the first no. My job starts at the first no. Yeah. And if let I'm me not tell you, Jilly no. B is a great salesperson. Thank you. I think that was well, my whole job. Yeah. No, there, there. I think are two kinds of, or three kinds of salespeople. There's overly salesy people. There's people who sell accidentally. I think I'm like that You're person. The I'm like, oh, did I just say something that made you want to buy? Okay. And then there's the person who like strategically can blend the two to help a person get to the place well where they i think, think it's i yes, think it's I a lot it. like so. pickleball because like okay so in sales your job starts at the very first no well how many pickleball matches do you play where everything's just going your way like yeah. my job as a pickleball player starts when i can't hit a third shot drop over the net and i'm like hmm, that's interesting adjust adjust adapt maneuver right. oh they're hitting me every ball at my left hip and i'm sliding too hard right i better start sliding left Oh, I'm missing my serves long. Okay. I better spin it more or well, so back up off the line and serve from three feet behind so the baseline. So you always say golf starts at the first miss hit. The first miss hit. I love that. Birdies in All golf. Right. Easy. Easy. Down the middle, on the green, putt went in. There's That's nothing easy. hard There's about nothing that. nothing to even talk about. And when you slice it into the woods, punch out to the fairway, and hit it to 10 feet and grind out a, a par or maybe a bogey, that's that's the real skill. Now, of course, you don't want to be punching out from the woods every hole. And that's where I think strategy shifting, decision making should be your savior. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the 
unskilled golfer isn't just the one slicing it into the woods. It's the person hitting their driver off every tee box instead of hitting a five iron or a hybrid or a three wood. And in pickleball, that's like, okay, so we're losing every point when we speed it up first. We're losing every point when we hit mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. the girl on the right who's a wall and that's, gets everything that's what back. I love about pickleball. Let's Figuring maybe that out. go to the middle. Let's start middle dicking. Let's let's start slowing it down. Let's let's drive our thirds. Sorry, instead did you say middle dropping. dinking or middle dicking? I, what? Was that? Did, were the, were the, those sounded the same to me. What did okay, you say? Okay. Digging? Yeah. Middle digging? Yeah, that's why I said. Well, digging. a middle dink gets you a middle dig, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, no, it is. I, we've talked about this before on the pod, but like it's fascinating to see how many players, their previous experiences as like, you know, Lacey Schneeman, I think was like an a- a- astrophysicist. No, 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 no. An engineer. It, sorry. Uh, uh, aerospace, yeah, aerospace engineer, engineer. engineer. not okay. astrophysicist. That's Kyron's, our friend Kyron's parents. Yes. Um, aerospace engineer. Um, you know, we've got Zane Navratil, super smart, former CPA uh, or auditor, worked for Deloitte, I think. Yeah, lawyers up the wazoo. Lawyers up the wazoo. Um, but yeah, really anal- analytical-minded, engineering-minded. Ben John's very high IQ. Uh, Anna, Anna Bright, high IQ. Mm-hmm. Anna Bright. And uh, yeah, no, it's it's good good company to be in, such intelligent players. And I think that is really my favorite part of, of pickleball is like, Oh, just hit this person on this one spot. She doesn't like it there. She's always sliding so hard here. Yeah. Well, lob, her, can't... lob her. She doesn't move backwards well. You know, everyone has a weakness. There's strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. My mom always used to say, there's no such thing as a weakness, only strengths. Okay, fine. That's true. But like everyone has a diminished strength, let's say. Your job is to find that diminished strength. Yeah. Even even arguably, Ben John's the high backhand, right? You're not going to get as much back now. You see him starting to use a two handed backhand. Work on that. Yeah. Yeah. So more dispensa isms. Um, your energy goes where your attention goes. I love Absolutely. this so much. So try and, you know, in your day, joy riders, really ask yourself and sense where is your attention going? Because where your attention goes, that's where your energy goes. Circles back to our first the negative talk of the like, yeah, yeah. If you're consistently circling that drain with the same negative thoughts, guess what? There's your attention. So you got to pick those 10,000 unique thoughts and really double down on that's them. That's true. Another Dispenza Aspreyism, knowledge is a precursor to experience. Love that. Um, did you know all thoughts have corresponding energy? So even thinking about something you find stressful or angering, like taxes, a bad ex-girlfriend, can chemically trigger your brain to feel angry and stressed. And feeling angry or stressed triggers your brain to think more corresponding thoughts equal to how you feel. So in essence, what do we have? Anger, stress, loop, mm-hmm. similar to the tape loop yeah. with the negative thoughts. Yeah. Now I want to circle back to knowledge is a precursor to experience. What does that mean to you? Um, I think it means when you open yourself up to understanding, understanding why it is you're feeling angry, impatient, or anxious, that is a precursor then to a better experience, a more elevated experience. Okay. Okay. Like knowledge is your precursor to the experience that you want. You have to open yourself up to it. That's what it means to me. Interesting. What does it mean to you? Well, when you think of knowledge, you think of something you already know. But you're kind of saying new knowledge new is knowledge. a precursor to new experiences. New experience. Okay. That makes sense. That's what it means to me. I'm sure Joe meant something totally different. <laughs> but that's the beauty of all of this. Okay. Thoughts are the language of the brain. Feelings are the language of the body. Ooh. You like that? That is true. I do tell people often, you know, golf is like the worst overthinking sport in the world. So... You go to a lesson and for an hour, I give you thoughts, right? I'm like, think this and do this. But really what I, I really try and steer people towards is feel, don't think. Mm, love that. Feel your swing. Feel the part of your swing you want to shape differently. Feel your swing and how its shape affects the shape of the ball. Take what you visualize and turn that into a feeling. Take the words that I am using because I have to communicate via English mm-hmm. and turn those English words into a feel thought, not a word thought. Love that. Um, another dispensism I really liked was in your life, if, the, if there are problems, there are also solutions. Focus more on the solution than the problem. Made me think of what Ben told us yesterday about putting intentions, putting your intentions on what you want and how your intention might be that you want sun in the morning and you want to go out and sunbathe, but the farmer needs rain for his crops. Yep. 
I loved that. Yeah. That like really hit me hard. You used to really be bothered by something I would always say. What? Which is that. I'm like, going to be bothered by it now probably. I don't want my favorite thing every minute of every day <laughs> because if I don't have something besides my favorite thing, my favorite thing has no contrast. So Dave Asprey was saying he thinks that ice baths, you know, the, which are all the rage right now, plunge, plunge, cold plunges, that's what they call them, um, are so beneficial to people because they're so grateful to not be cold the rest of the day. <laughs> Which is exactly what you're saying. They're like, totally. okay, I felt pain. Yeah. And now the rest of the day, I don't feel pain anymore. Oh my God, I played seven matches. Well, at least I didn't play 12. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, my very last joke. Yeah, your bad days just help you appreciate the good ones. So my very last Asprey Dispenza is um, um, healthy social bonds are actually the number one determinant of longevity. So mm -hmm. really think about that. Mm -hmm. Healthy social bonds are the number one determinant for how long you will live on this earth. So it should be like a special longevity category for hermits and loners. I, I know. It's like That's how, me. what's the oldest <laughs> living loner in history? Oh my God. So funny. All right, are we ready? <laughs> for merger talks draft update we already did it is there more oh i don't know well i mean there's the actual draft update ah. that it's coming up april 1st and 3rd second and third so coming up we have the mlp uh second and third yeah. draft but before that we are taking a quick pit stop in minnesota then we're going to delray i am playing the app delray with andre Descu who has had an incredible couple weeks. Andre the Giant took down uh, Ben Johns and Annalie Waters with Anna Bright. Also, uh, yeah. Is Andre Dayskew the new king of pickleball? Yeah. It's a legitimate question. It is. It is. So playing with Andre and Delray and Megan Fudge in Delray as well. So super excited for that. And going to spend the week in Delray training. Amazing. Super excited for that. And um, yeah, so in, in case you missed it, Andre has meddled in like every single event he's played in the last three tournaments. Amazing. He went from the surprise, I think, bronze with Gabe and Mesa to then gold uh, with Anna Bright. Yep. And um, he also got gold with Gabe in Sacramento, then went to Miami. Yep. He's just been on so an absolute we'll be, tear. We'll be in Delray during the draft uh, and then play Delray. And then for those of you who are like, wait, I thought you were supposed to play North Carolina Jill with Augie Ga and Caitlin Christian. It's funny. I'm not the only person in this like really weird position of having to choose between those two events. You know, it's been really difficult with um, the MLP draft. When you apply, they have the dates that you might have to play, the tournaments you might have to play. And four of eight of those conflict with APP events. And if I don't meet and Andre doesn't meet and JW doesn't meet and these people, these players don't meet a certain number of APP events, so either six or 12, they don't have their prize money matched a certain percentage. Mm -hmm. So in essence, me saying, yes, I'll play MLP or I want to play MLP makes North Carolina absolutely impossible for me to play. Uh, absolutely impossible because then I won't meet my six requirement. Yeah. And there are four other And then you're leaving events, way too much money possibly. on the table. Right. So that's that's the story with that. So super unfortunate. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll play again with, with both Augie and, and Caitlin and Lowe's. Yeah. Yeah. You got Caitlin for sure. Um, so, yeah. I mean, do you want to talk about the, the draft? It is the new dynamic bidding process for Premier. Okay. So basically each round the teams will throw their you know paddle up for how much they're willing to bid for that first slot wow. then they go to the second slot and basically you have a i think the the rumor is the five hundred thousand monopoly money mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then if you want to add to that you can uh purchase up to five hundred thousand more wow so it's possible that someone could bid 900,000 in the first round and then have 100,000 left or for the next someone, three rounds. Or could someone bid nine, 999,000 yeah, or, or they could just nine hundred and ninety seven dollars for they Ben could just, Johns. They could just bid a million and then just take the 12th slot in the next three. Whatever. Okay, so you're buying so, slots. So, yeah, so not only that, but you're sort of like guessing which players will be available to that slot. My once, head hurts. You, once you get there i'm really bad yeah. at this just call me tell me what yeah. team i'm on yeah and then they did release the uh the randomized 
order for the snake draft that will still be the challenger draft the so challenger two totally draft, different style drafts yep will be as it's been snake draft in other mm-hmm. words one through 12 and then if you get the 12th pick you get the the 13th pick the first pick of the second round but there are six rounds six players in challenger so it's almost like the kuang dong rule like the this specialist oh, single, in singles specialist. are we gonna throw them a bone that maybe they figure out doubles do we have like what's the strategy on those last two slots do you pick the the the, the swing for the fences high upside question so mark me, or do you take that person who's like the just in case this other swing for the fences person doesn't work out i have a backup okay so let me let me understand the premiere so everyone starts with half a million dollars you theoretically can buy, i don't think they've published that but that's what's been rumored okay then in you can places. buy half a million dollars more for half a million dollars no way yeah yeah yeah. for half a million dollars yeah which makes wow. sense i mean i think the the premier slots went for 400 right so 500 for your slots and then would for your, you i mean for your next three years keep, of players yeah would you be guaranteed so for that one time half a million dollars you'd get ben johns for three years theoretically but so then what are you hoping as a team owner that you make you you're able to sell um merch merchandise that, with, that says john's on the back yeah. and your yeah you become like the a thing team you become that, like the team mm-hmm. the dynasty yeah no it's interesting i mean i uh i don't think anything is going to be like fully MLP contractual, but I do think the natural evolution is for the team owners to get used to bonusing out their players and for this this bet that they're all betting on, as we all know, like mm-hmm. the money that's coming into pickleball is not in line with where the money making opportunities are yet. They're like buying broadcast time and they are, mm-hmm. you know, getting sponsors at higher and higher values, but they still don't completely offset the millions of dollars. But they're all betting on the future and if you look at other sports mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it does start to make sense with the with the merchandising and the you know the the crowds i think they're eventually going to make yeah. money on their home events or whatnot i still think it's it's but, it's so interesting like the lack of storyline with any you know prize money and uh i don't mean to focus on a problem and not a solution but like i know i'm someone who like wants logic to, wants to win a staring contest i'm so competitive <laughs> like someone actually said that to me once someone you're so competitive you would try and win a staring contest uh, and i looked him, never lost one yet and i looked him in the eye and said thank you <laughs> like it was a compliment would you like to thumb more <laughs> yeah you <let's> th- <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just super curious like are the, a lot of these players gonna a show up and be like show up like are they gonna try Right. With no prize money on the line, just having these like, yeah, here's my check. Here's my check. Yeah. The big, the big question. So yeah, the one other uh, piece of info is, guess who got the number one slot in Challenger? Oh, Frisco Pandas. The Frisco Pandas. My favorite team you've never been on. (laughs) (laughs) I like the, I like the logo. I like the colors and I, uh, I like the underdog. So obviously this draft will be uh, unique and new Mm -hmm. and exciting and interesting, but there is one other thing that's that's also a big question mark is that because all these players are on such different agreements as a GM or a a, a Mm. drafter, you're like, okay, if I buy a huge expensive slot in the first round Mm -hmm. and I draft one of these top five guys, presumably, or girls, Mm. Are they going to play every event that I need them for in the next three years? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to have to like pony up more money money or whatever, whatever to convince them to to be my my rock? No, so that's a really good point. You've got people on very different contracts or off contracts now completely. Yeah. So yeah. Or how many people are going to not get picked up because it looks like their contract is is saying, you know, they won't. So. I don't know. Are people going to need to make like a an advanced statement to owners? Like, hi, my name's Kristen Walla. And if you draft me as your sixth pick to challenger, I will play every event. Hi, I'm Kristen Walla. My strengths are building furniture, <laughs> teaching the occasional golf lesson. I'm a duper 4.09, but uh, aspirationally really think that my coach, Jilly B, can help me get to a 4.5 this year. I, I believe it. I believe it. But my true strength. One recent knee surgery. <laughs> 
<laughs> one and a half legs. My doctor says I can play as soon as July 25th. <laughs> but my best strength on a deserted island is my way with metaphors. My facility with words. Thank you. Draft oh me. Oh my God. So yeah, that in um, the, the Beer City Open has now become the MLP midseason event. So anyone who was looking to play an amateur event in association with an MLP event, which you hadn't been able to do since season one mm. of MLP, mm. you now can sign up to play the Beer City Open and you will be at the MLP midseason event. All right. That is our draft update uh i've got a new monthly joyrider challenge segment joyrider challenge um first off if you're listening if you're listening to this pod you are obviously like a brilliant person and you are definitely in addition to being brilliant someone who wants to be the best version of yourself so with that said i'm kicking off a new pod segment the monthly joyrider challenge and i want you to accept this challenge so here challenge accepted is your challenge and i want you to log your progress email us your results or comment on youtube with how the joyrider challenge is going for you so this month this month's challenge we want you to play singles at least twice over the next four weeks but jill i don't play singles that's okay that's why this challenge exists you also didn't play doubles before you started playing doubles pickleball think about that okay okay uh so kristen why do we want joy riders to play some singles uh because we want them to get outside their comfort zone because that's where the magic happens i like that i like that a lot that was thinking on your feet pull that one out of your bum i liked it thanks i'm um, full of them so it's my favorite ever, kind of thinking if you ever watch a singles player play doubles you know they drop shot a lot they've got great drives they use the whole court they think about the court differently and i think um you know we went to dinner with our friend sean and she said jill i hated you when you give, gave me our last lesson and you had me hitting backhand dinks, cross court, left-handed. Mm -hmm. I hated you. And now I won't do a drill session without it. And I can do 50 in a row, no problem. I couldn't do five in a row two months ago. And in addition, everything else, by contrast, suddenly seems so possible, so easy. Exactly. So doable. And I find that whenever I'm struggling with my doubles, I go and I play a little bit of singles. So you might be thinking I'm asking you to like literally go play singles matches. No, I'm just saying like, hey, you've got your doubles foursome. First 15 minutes, last 15 minutes. Hey, will you play me some singles points? I just want to feel it. I just want to see it. And I think your brain, right, with like the left-handed dinks will start working differently because you're playing singles. I think your drives will improve. I think you'll start serving bigger. Mm. Um there's all these little things that happen. You'll start drop shotting more. You'll see different aspects of the court. Uh, and so I want you to try it and uh, report back. And that is your Joyrider challenge of the month. Now you might be thinking, what about players who already play singles? What's their challenge? No, actually what I was thinking was, oh, a new segment. I guess I need to write another song this week. <laughs> That's also true. Joyrider challenge. <laughs> Sweet. I just saved myself like an hour you nailed that <laughs> i could do that part <laughs> speaking of which i hope you liked the theme song that made its comeback this week <laughs> okay so we are, are we, we are over we, an hour what so, do we tell our right. door riders who already play singles i'm in my salsa i okay. believe for pickleball i have 90 seconds i, I was just gonna say and I've it's got 90 seconds. okay Okay. I'll tie up my Mizunos in, in 10 seconds and be out of yeah, here. Yeah. What if our joy riders, Jill, okay. <laughs> what if our joy riders already play singles? See, I'm reading the notes. I sometimes do that. By the way, this pod was one of our very first pods where Kristen wrote an outline for a pod. I wrote an outline for a pod. We both didn't know we weren't in each other's outlines. Does that make sense? Yeah, until like right before the pod. And then I was like, you know, that outline I was looking at didn't really have a lot of Jill in it. And my <laughs> outline, if... I was like, did Kristen edit my outline? Did she yet? add anything? So this was two different pods merged together. We hope you what didn't is notice funny, or you did notice. We have this thing we say a lot to each other, which is no independent thought, yeah. thought stream. Like we are mentally so connected that we independently have the, the same, same thought. thoughts. 
And there were like four things in my notes that were in yours. So there you go. Okay, so what do we challenge our joy riders with who already play singles? Do you know? I don't know. I was hoping you were going to come up with something. I would say if you already play singles, it's the same as what I tell people who often come to a golf lesson and I'm like, okay, do you want to do short game or long game? And they say long game and I say, okay, how's your short game? If it's the best part of your game, Mm -hmm. I still want to see it because Mm -hmm. I want to take the best part of your short game Mm -hmm. and bring it to your long game. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. if you're already good at singles, how can we take those skills and implement and implement them into doubles? Maybe you're a guy who doesn't realize you should be taking over more court. Maybe you are thinking too much about the person in front of you and you just need to think about the spot. So that's actually really good. Because when I was playing a ton of singles, I'm getting back into it right now, um, my passing shots, like I could put, I could literally place a passing shot on a quarter on the court, anywhere on the court at any time. And then I was struggling with like my third shots and doubles. And I was like, oh, close your eyes and like pretend that it's singles. So that's great, Kristen. Let's challenge singles players listening to this challenge to bring aspects of their singles games they like into their doubles. Absolutely. I love that. Good. Absolutely. I knew you were going to come up Nothing with something. Nothing but space. Amazing. Um, so yeah, as we said, up next, APP Delray. Excited. We're going to so flow. Here we go. Going to train with uh, the Johnson 5, Andre. Hey, Jill, uh, did you know that the number one region in Duper is the Atlantic South? Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to bring it down next week. <laughs> Duper Regionals is PTSD for me. If you didn't know, oh. every time you saw Duper post a regional, that was like 120 hours of Kristen, Kristen work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joy Riders, that's the pod. Pickleball is joy. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Don't forget to write us this pblife at gmail.com. We out! This Pickleball Life is a Tomahawk production. 100% organic, self-made, and homegrown. Music by K-Dubs. Editing by K-Dubs and Jilly B. Check out pbgods.com and use code PBLIFERS for 10% off your next order. Do you have a question for Jilly B? Email us at thispblife at gmail.com to be included in future episodes. Don't forget to click subscribe. This Pickleball Life. Go play Pickleball. Doop, 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 doop.